Hi everyone, it's Patty Alaka back with some tools for living. I hope that you're feeling well today, but even if you're not, I'm really glad that you've chosen to spend this time with me. I'm really excited about what the Lord has put on my heart to speak about today. Today we're going to talk about frog. Do you see my shirt? Can you see that I have frogs on my shirt? Well, the Lord has a lot to say about that, but before we get started, let's go to prayer as the Lord reminds us to pray without ceasing. Heavenly Father, wonderful Lord Jesus, glorious Holy Spirit, we come to your throne on our knees in humility today, Lord. You are the Alpha and Omega. You're all that exists. Everything that we do and everything that we don't do is for you and for your glory. We give praise and honor and glory to your holy name for all the ways that you're working in our lives, Lord. And I thank you for bringing me and whoever is watching this video into this space right here, right now, Lord. And we ask that you heal us physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and relationally. Teach us what it is that you would like us to know. Not my words, but your words, Lord. Not my will, but your will, Lord. We ask all of this in your powerful and mighty name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So thank you again for being here today. I'm really excited about this topic. Frog. What do you think about frog? Well, I love the acronym frog. Frog stands for fully rely on God. Let's take a moment. Let's take a step back. Breathe. Pause. Invite the Lord into your heart. And I want to ask you, how are you doing with inviting the Lord into your heart and fully relying on God? Fully relying on God. Such a wonderful reminder as we look at this little frog, right? So it's, um, it's a reality in our lives that we go through different seasons. Look at your life this past year. How much have you been through in this past year? And how about the last uh, several years? How about the last decade? We go through so much. We go through so many chapters. We go through so many seasons. And uh, some are not so easy. Some are easier than others. And the Lord reminds us in Hebrews 13, 8, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So why would we not rely on him? Why would we not rely on the Trinity, the Father that made us, the Son that saved us, and the Holy Spirit that lives within us is with us at all times always. And all we need to do is to call him right into our heart. So I ask you, I encourage you to see how it is in your quiet time, in your self-reflection time this week, in your journal time, begin to pay attention to how much you are relying on God and begin to frog fully rely on God. He loves us so much. He gave us his only begotten son that whoever lives in this life will not perish, but will have eternal life as long as we believe in him and call him into our heart. So I really want to encourage you as you think about your life, let's take a step back again. Think about your circumstances. What are you going through currently? What's happened today? What's going to happen tomorrow? What happened yesterday? How about this last week or this last month or this last year? or these last several years? Are you struggling with something that's happened that's still so hard and so heavy on your heart? Give it to the Lord. That's what we're called to do, to fully rely on God. Two, absolutely lean on him and know that he is with us at all times always, no matter where we go, no matter what we do, no matter what's happening in our lives. We want to remember that whatever we focus on expands. So if we focus on our circumstances and we don't think so much about God and we focus on our circumstances, that begins to magnify and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So we're encouraged to put our circumstances right at the foot of the cross, right here, right now. Just put it right at the foot of the cross, whatever you're struggling with, whatever you have struggled with, put it right here at the foot of the cross. And in exchange, breathe in his grace, his mercy, and his peace, and trust that he is with us. He wants us to fully rely on him. So begin to develop that beautiful capacity to fully rely on God. 
we are also encouraged to think about what I love to refer to as the threefold path. And that's not news, that's been around for a while. When we want to learn something, we need to rely on a good teacher. That's the fir first part of the threefold path. Then we need to rely on the teachings of the teacher. And then we need to go to school, right? So when we focus on the threefold path, we're first encouraged to rely on the teacher, the eternal teacher, again, the Trinity, the Father that made us, the Son that saved us, and the Holy Spirit that lives within us. That's the first part of the threefold path. He is our teacher. Then we rely on the teachings as the second part of that threefold path. And the teachings is none other than the Bible. The basic instructions before leaving earth. We're encouraged to find a really good study Bible, keep our nose in it every day, develop a habit, develop a pattern of reading the Bible. And if you're finding it challenging to read the Bible, you may want to uh, get a really good devotional or just um, download this free app that I will uh, put in the description section where it always gives us verses of the day. And there's lots of beautiful free devotionals that you can read or just simply listen to. So that's the second part of the threefold path, the teachings. Develop the habit of reading the beautiful Bible his teachings that he gave us. And then the third part of the threefold path is going to school. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means connecting with fellow believers. It means going to a really good church. You want to maybe spend some time thinking about where in your area is there a really good church that follows the Holy Spirit and test it out and go into that church and, and go to the church every Sunday and begin to see if there's other activities in that church where you can start to develop a relationship with the beautiful body of Christ known as the fellow believers, where you can start develop relationships and they can start showing you how they frog, how they fully rely on God and how you frog, how you fully rely on God. And you can start to develop those relationships and have those conversations where you're pouring into them, they're pouring into you and you're beginning to develop a beautiful relationship with our wonderful Lord. We're also encouraged to be thinking about the fact that we do live in a broken world and sometimes things get messy, sometimes things are awful, sometimes we live in conflict. I don't like conflict, I'm a peaceful person. I really love to develop peace. I refer to myself as a peacemaker. I often try to have peaceful, peaceful relationships. I'm sure you do too, but sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes people are broken. They are going through their own struggles and it's really hard for them to let go of their conflict or their side of the, the conflict. And so we're encouraged to be thinking about this. If we've made a mistake, to spend some quiet self-reflection time and ask the Lord to help you to discover what you did wrong in that part. You know, none of us are perfect. The only one that was ever perfect was our wonderful Lord Jesus as he walked around this earth. So begin to look at what you might have done wrong and then repent for that mistake, that sin. Ask the Lord for forgiveness and see how you can go about your life in a more peaceful, more loving way. And if you rack your brain and you see that you've already done everything you possibly can and there's still that conflict, well then don't worry about it. Put it right at the foot of the cross and trust that the Lord is using it for your good and just let it go and begin to live your life more fully and completely as you fully rely on God. Frog. We're also encouraged to remember, um, I kind of like this, you know, you know, it's, it's been said in different ways that when we go deeper into our faith. It's almost like when there's a new devil, new level, when we're, when we're climbing up our levels, there's a new devil. There's going to be more ways that the enemy is going to knock us off. The other thing that I have heard um, is that if we're not upsetting anybody or we're not having any conflict in life, then we're not really living our life with integrity because we are going to offend people not in you know not intentionally but just living our life and being who we are we may be um you know kind of like the target of projection and transference and people may not be happy with what we're doing maybe we're shining more of the lord's love like grace mercy and peace 
through us as he uses us as an instrument. And there may be people in the world that are not fully relying on God and are not wanting to see how there's a different way. But I encourage you to remember to get your validation from our wonderful Lord, get your approval from our, from our wonderful Lord, as long as you're following his teachings, as long as you're fully relying on God, as long as you're being the best version that you can possibly be of yourself, let it all go and trust that the Lord is working on it. Even if you can't see it, even if you can't feel it, trust that the Lord is working on all those circumstances. We're also reminded that, again, when we're going through a conflict, that we're encouraged to ask the Lord to bless them. Just bless them. Bless our enemies. Bless those that persecute us. Bless those that do not want to reconcile with us, even if it's been years. It's okay. Put it right at the foot of the cross and ask the Lord to bless them and ask the Lord to change us. How can he open up our eyes? How can he use everything that happens, everything that doesn't happen as an opportunity to grow us and to grow our fruit of the spirit? Remember truly that everything in life is either a blessing, a wonderful gift from our wonderful Lord, or it's an opportunity to grow which when we grow through it and use hard times and challenges and wounds and you know conflicts and difficult chapters in our lives it can absolutely be a blessing because it's in the hard times that we grow the most look back in your life when have you grown the most most likely it was when you were going through a very challenging chapter in your life so praise god for that thank god for that and so we're also encouraged to, again, develop that beautiful relationship with our wonderful Lord, fully rely on God, frog. And some people ask, how do I develop a relationship with the invisible God? Well, have him become more visible. You know, in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. So when we can develop our faith, hope, and trust in him, and we, we know that tangibly he is there with us, we can truly increase our faith, hope, and trust, and we can in tr truly walk by faith and not by sight. Walking by faith means that we're looking through our spiritual eyes and trusting, even if we can't see it, he is indeed working. And that's how we develop that beautiful relationship with our wonderful Lord. So I have some suggestions, some guidelines that we can go a little bit further into how it is that we can frog, fully rely on God. First, we're encouraged to spend quiet time with our wonderful Lord. And some of us may need some more space, silence, solitude as we honor the Sabbath. See if you can carve out some quiet quiet self-reflection time where you can begin to develop that relationship with our wonderful Lord. Remember that when we write love letters to him, we are pouring out our heart and we can trust that he is listening to what it is that we are saying. And also, as we read the Bible, we can pay attention to how he's answering what it is that we're struggling with. So that's the first part is to just simply carve out that quiet time. See if you can write some letters as you pray to him and listen to what he's uh, saying as he responds to what you are pouring your, house, your heart out with. The second thing to remember is to develop this conversation with our wonderful Lord all day long. When you have an opportunity, when you're going to the bathroom, when you're brushing your teeth, when you're going for a walk, to and from work or to the store or wherever it is that you're going, tap into that opportunity to connect with the Lord. And it's okay to talk to him. You can talk to him out loud. You can talk to him silently and thank him for all the ways that he's blessing you. Put a gratitude in each of your fingers and see if you can develop the habit of focusing on 10 things you're feeling grateful for every day. The sunshine, the rain, the beautiful flowers, uh, whatever is happening in nature, but begin to develop that relationship with the Lord and thank him all day long for the ways that he is blessing you and also ask him to help you with all of your circumstances. The third part, again, is to remember 
that everything is a blessing or an opportunity to grow. And you may want to even label it. Thank you for that blessing, Lord. Oh, thank you for that wonderful opportunity to grow, Lord. I know it doesn't feel so good to grow. Sometimes we do go through growing pains, but trust that the Lord is with us, helping us in all of our circumstances. Uh, the fourth thing we may want to remember is to push ourselves. Sometimes we really do need to push ourselves. We do need to take the covers off our head, get up in the morning, come up with uh, maybe three goals to do every single day and push ourselves to go a little bit further into our world. How is the Lord calling you to be a better version of yourself? What is he calling you to do? Is there someone, is there a neighbor? Is there someone that's needing help? Is there a meal that can be cooked? Is there someone in the hospital that can be visited? Is there a way that the Lord is calling you to help his people? And I love the acronym uh, PUSH is uh, pray until something happens. Again, pray just simply means conversation with the Lord. So we talk to him and we listen for him and his response to us. So you can push all day long. You can push yourself all day long and you can pray until something happens all day long. And then five, again, remember to put all of your burdens, all of your struggles, all of your circumstances right at the foot of the cross and breathe in his grace, his mercy and peace. And while we do that, we can do the square breath. And let's do that together. That always helps us to feel so much better where we can get out of fight or flight and get more in rest and digest. So we'll do that together. I'm going to use my finger and you can follow along with me. First, we're gonna breathe in through our nose and then pause for as long as we can. That makes the top part of the square and then breathe out through your mouth and then pause again. That makes the bottom part of the square. We'll do that one more time. This time, as we breathe in, we're going to breathe in his Holy Spirit. And then we're going to pause for as long as we can. And this time, as we breathe out, we're going to put everything that we no longer want or need. We'll put it right at the foot of the cross. And then pause for as long as you can. We'll do that one more time. Breathing in his Holy Spirit. And then pause for as long as you can. And then as you breathe out, intentionally breathe out what you no longer want or need. Just put it right at the foot of the cross. And then pause for as long as you can. I'm sure just by your doing that three breath cycle that you're feeling more peaceful, calm, and relaxed. And I encourage you to do this in your quiet time, in your self-reflection time, or throughout your day, wherever you are. Uh, it will help you to feel so much better physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and relationally. We're also encouraged to be thinking about how it is that we can hold on to something tangibly. You know, when people say, how do I develop a relationship with the invisible God? Well, he's there with us every moment of every hour of every day, but it really is okay to use a cross, to visualize a cross, to hold on to a cross. I will often hold on to this cross and feel as if the Lord is holding my hand. You can do that. Maybe there's a cross that you have. I will also put a link for purchasing across in the description section where you can just feel his presence and trust that he's with you every moment of every hour of every day. Maybe you have rosary beads that you can hold on to. Maybe there's an icon of a cross, a picture of Jesus that you can visualize, but we can begin to develop ways to truly develop that relationship with our wonderful Lord. We are also encouraged to be thinking about that beautiful uh, acronym from Cognitive uh, Behavioral Therapy, A plus B equals C. A is the event. So let's say there's a struggle, there's a conflict that you're going through in life. Remember that we can't always do anything about the event or the struggle. It's there, it happened, it is what it is. But we can always, always, always change B. A plus B equals C. A is the event, B is our perception of the event, and C is our experience. So we can change B. Ask the Lord to help you to shift your perspective, to change your perception on 
the event. Maybe it just simply is part of your journey to help you to grow spiritually, to help you to grow emotionally, mentally, uh, relationally. Maybe it's there for you to grow the fruit of your spirit, whatever that may be. There is often a reason why things happen. The Lord may not create everything because we do have an enemy uh, that's alive and well on planet Earth, but the Lord always, always, always works through all the circumstances. So begin to develop the habit of seeing how our wonderful Lord, use your spiritual eyes and begin to see how it is our wonderful Lord is truly helping us in all of our circumstances and how it is that we can change our perception, our perspective, which then absolutely changes our experience, which will help us to feel so much better. Okay, so let's go a little bit further into scripture and let's hear a little bit more about what the Lord has to say about fraud, fully relying on God. So we'll start off with Psalm 18 too, where it says, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, amen. Frog, he is there yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He doesn't ever change. He's the same always. And all we need to do is develop that beautiful relationship with him. Frog, fully rely on God. In Psalm 55, 22, it says, cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. Amen. No matter what conflict you're going through, no matter what conflict you've gone through in the past, no matter what circumstances, what hardships, the Lord is with us at all times, always. Will you begin to develop and deepen your relationship with him? It will help you to feel so much better. In Isaiah 41, 13, it says, for I am the Lord, your God, who uh, upholds you, your right hand, who says, do not fear, I will help you. Amen. He's so ready, willing, and able to help us at all times, always. And all we need to do is to call him right into our heart. In 2 Corinthians 1, 9, it says, indeed, we felt that we received the sentence of, sentence of death. But that was to make us rely on, not ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. Amen. So beautiful to remember that sometimes in those horrific situations that are so challenging, that sometimes they're there so that we can begin to develop that deep relationship with our wonderful Lord. He's there with us all times, always fully rely on God. Frog. In Deuteronomy 31, 6, it says, be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Again, remember that your life is a journey. Look at how much has happened in your life from the moment you were born. Begin to see all of these circumstances. They may not be blessings at the time, but absolutely they are opportunities for us to grow and to develop and deepen our relationship with our wonderful Lord, to fully rely on God. In Jeremiah 17, 07, it says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. Again, we are so blessed when we fully rely on God. John 10.10, 10, it says, The thief comes only to steal, kill, steal, kill, and destroy. I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Our wonderful Lord came into this world because it was broken and we needed a Savior and he became our Savior. In Mark 16, 16, it says, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Amen. Fully rely on God. So right here, right now, let's deepen our relationship with him. Whether you have done this before or whether you've, whether you've never done this before or you've done this a hundred times, let's do this together. Developing a relationship with our wonderful Lord is as simple as A, B, C. First, A. We admit that we are a sinner. 
We admit that we've made mistakes, that we derailed, that we missed the mark. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. We've all made mistakes. So A is simply <clears throat> admitting that we are a sinner. And then B, believe that our wonderful Lord Jesus died for our sins. He died for my sins and he died for your sins. Believe that he went through all of this for us. And C, commit your life to Christ. So repent from those mistakes, repent from those sins. Repent just means simply turn around, put all of that at the foot of the cross. And then C, commit your life to Christ. Develop that beautiful relationship with our wonderful Lord. Frog, fully rely on God. In Proverbs 3, 5, 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. I guarantee you that if you fully rely on God, Frog, right here, right now, begin to see him, develop that relationship with him. He will help you in all of your circumstances. He will help you to feel so much better. In John 14, 1, it says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me, Frog. Remember that he wants us to develop a relationship with him. He went through all of this. He was nailed to the cross for our sins because he loves us that much. He truly wants us to develop a relationship with him. Frog, fully rely on God. In Hebrews 13, 6, it says, So we can confidently say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? In other words, Let's get our validation from our wonderful Lord. He loves us so much. He wants us to develop a relationship with him. He wants us to see him at all times, always. In Romans 12, 2, it says, Do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is God's will, his good and pleasing and perfect will. Again, frog, fully rely on God. Trust that he's with us at all times, always. Trust that everything is either a blessing or an opportunity for us to grow fully and completely and develop that relationship with him. In Matthew 6.33, but seek first the kingdom of his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. So he asks us to fully rely on God. Develop that relationship with him. Seek him first in all of your circumstances, whether you're home or whether you're at school or whether you're at work or whatever it is that you're doing, family, friends, uh, enemies, all kinds of circumstances, fully rely on God. And in all these circumstances, seek first his kingdom. Seek first his righteousness. Seek first our wonderful Lord. And then everything will all work out because he truly uses everything as an opportunity for us to grow. And we'll end with Isaiah 26, 4, where it says, Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord himself is the rock eternal. Amen. He loves us so much. So I encourage you this week in your quiet time and your self-reflection time, see how it is that you can deepen your relationship with our wonderful Lord. See how it is that you can make a commitment to yourself and to our wonderful Lord where you're frog. You fully rely on God. I hope that this message was helpful for you today. I am praying for you every single day, and I ask that you please pray for me too. I would love to hear from you if you have any comments or questions, or if you would like to schedule a session to go deeper. I am a clinical pastoral counselor, a nurse, a life coach, and a therapist. I would love to hear from you, and I would love to work with you. You can reach out to me on my website, toolsforliving.net. That's tools, the number four, living.net. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you. Take care.
Bye-bye.